Hello everyone. Welcome to Commerce Net Scholars. I hope you all are perfectly fit and fine and you are being regular with the studies. Today's video is the continuation of the development of management thought, evolution of the management thought that we had started in our previous uh, topics. We have already discuss discussed about the early contributions. We have discussed about the scientific management in my previous videos. We have discussed about general management, human relations approach and social systems approach. These are the uh, five basic topics or five uh, basic approaches or evolution of management thought that we have already discussed in my previous videos. You can go and check it out in the playlist of business management and HRM. Today, the topics that we'll be covering will be decision theory approach, management science approach and human behavior approach. So, completing these three, we'll be left with two more approaches, systems approach and contingency approach, will well be, which I'll be covering in my next upcoming video. So let's proceed with today's video without wasting any time but before starting as you all know do not forget to subscribe the channel if you are new to the channel watch the video till the end do give it a like if you really like the video and most important of all share it with your friends as much as possible let's proceed with today's topic first topic that is decision theory approach now as the name suggests decision theory approach looks at the basic problem of management around decision making whenever we are dealing in business the basic problem is of decision making decisions regarding from where the resources have to be procured decisions regarding the selection of personal decision regarding how the work has to be done all these basic problems uh, that are related to decision making need to be taken care of so this approach basically dealt with this basic problem that was of decision making the major emphasis of this approach is that decision making is the job of every manager but obvious decision making has to be done at each and every level you cannot say that it is just to be done by the top level management because they have to frame the policies they have to look after the vision mission objectives it is something that has to be adopted by each and every level of the manager whether we are talking about the middle level managers or we are talking about the lower level managers it has to be followed and it has to be done by each and every level when we are talking about an organization the manager is a decision maker and organization is a decision making unit therefore the basic problem in managing is to make rational decision rational decisions decisions that are not biased from this point of view decision theory approach has following features first feature says management is essentially decision making but obvious starting from planning organizing staffing directing or controlling when uh, whatever functions of management we are talking we see that it involves decision making not only at the planning stage but also at the other functions of management whenever we are talking about organizing we need to decide about how the resources have to be used talking about staffing we need to decide about how the employees have to be recruited how they have to be placed where they have to be placed talking about directing we need to decide about how and where they have to be guided in what reference and talking about controlling we need to decide that what standards have to be set to actually evaluate the performance of the employees in the organization so this is one basic feature talking about the next the members of organization are decision makers and problem solvers but obvious the members of the organization whether we are talking about the managers or we are talking about the employees of the organization they are vested with the functions of uh, deciding as well as for the problem solving organization can be treated as a combination of various decision centers but obvious number of departments are there under an organization so for every department decision has to be taken which is taken at its individual level or center quality of decision affects the organizational effectiveness if you are making smart decisions accurate decisions prompt decisions but obvious your working of the organization would be better it would be effective and efficient but if you are not so smart in making the decisions the decisions are not made on time they are not prompt enough then the organizational functioning would be suffering at some or the other extent all factors affecting decision making are the subject matter of study of management each and every aspect of management needs to be assessed properly only then you can guarantee a sound decision making for the organization besides processes and techniques involved in decision making other factors affecting decisions are information system social and psychological aspects of decision makers thus it covers entire range of human activities in organization as well as the macro conditions within the organization works so not only we are talking about the 
factors that are involved into decision making but this decision making is based on other factors which can be referred to as the information system from where you are getting the information the social aspects the psychological aspects considering each and every human aspect of the organization now in this regard there were certain contributions made by herbert simon who was he let's understand first herbert simon a nobel prize winner in economics has made a significant contributions in the field of management particularly administrative behavior and decision making so he was a nobel prize winner in economics and he has made certain contributions in this field his contributions both cover both social systems and decision theory approaches more particularly the latter obviously the decision theory approach that is why we are discussing it here Simon looked at organizational problems in totality of social psychological context and viewed that decision making takes place in this context his major contributions can be summarized as below so what were his major, major contributions he uh, propounded about the concept of organization he told us about the concept of organization that how the organization functions decision making but obvious decision making is very important in an organization next is bounded rationality bounded rationality means what wherever the decisions have to be made they have to be complete uh, they have to be uh, rational but not they but they do not need to be completely rational there there can be some biasness there can be some assumptions on to which the decisions have to be made next is the administrative man administrative man uh, basically it is referred to as the model of decision making model means what that uh, the person who will be involved into decision making has to adopt certain approaches has to uh, uh, you know perceive the world into a real model and then make decisions according to it next we have organizational communication the communication that is to be there in the organization needs to be clear it has to have three steps that are initiation transmission and receipt of information initiation will be the start of the need of transmitting uh, or entering into the communication pro process transmission when the when the message is transferred from one person to another and the receipt of information when finally the communication or the information is received by the receiver now in this regard let's have the contributions of peter drucker we have already discussed about hybrid simon among the contemporary management thinkers peter drucker a management consultant outshines all he has varied experience and background which include psychology sociology law and journalism now what were his major contributions let's uh, have them one by one first is nature of management it was peter f drucker who had uh, described about the nature of management that the basic objective of management is to le lead towards innovation this innovation creativity should be there among the managers and hence he was of the view that management is not merely a science or art rather it is also a profession next we had the management functions peter f drucker was the first as i have told you in my previous video also that peter f drucker was the first person who had identified the functions of management which involve achieving the specific purpose and mission of the organization making work productive and the worker achieving and managing social impacts and social responsibilities so these were the functions of management that peter f drucker had given next is organization structure as per uh, peter f drucker it had three features enterprise should be organized for performance it should contain the least possible number of managerial levels basically we should have just three levels because if you have a number mo more than uh, three uh, levels of management it would ultimately create chaos because each level has to see its own working and the third was it must make possible the training and testing of tomorrow's top managers there must be devised some uh, techniques through which it should be taken care of next is federalism federalism is what it refers to the centralized control in decentralized structure wherein you are uh, uh, you know decentralizing the decision making authority but still you have some centralized control over it that there are certain decisions which need not be taken at all levels they have to be centralized they have to be formulated by the top level managers only and the most important contribution of peter f drucker was management by objectives wherein the objectives certain objectives have to be formulated for the organization which have to be kept in mind and the work has to be done accordingly next was organizational changes the changes uh, that were occurring in the organization since the environment of the business is dynamic it keeps on changing so whatever changes whatever dynamism is related to the business that was outlined by him 
Second approach that we have for today is management science approach also known as quantitative mathematical or operations research approach visualizes management as a logical entity the action of which can be expressed in terms of mathematical symbols relationships and measurement data. Now this was something quite different because earlier we already uh, have seen the contributions wherein the qualitative aspect was uh, you know highlighted but here in in this approach the quantitative aspect was uh, highlighted and it was believed that it can be expressed in mathematical uh, relationships or measurement data. The basic features of it were management is regarded as the problem solving mechanism with the help of mathematical tools and techniques. Management problems can be described in terms of mathematical symbols and data thus every managerial activity can be quantified these were the basic contributions that it gave. This approach covers decision making system analysis and some aspects of human behavior approach operations research mathematical tools and quantitative techniques are the basic methodologies to solve managerial problems. Now management science approach is a fast developing one in analyzing and understanding management this has contributed significantly in developing orderly thinking in management which has provided exactness in management discipline. So this is a kind of approach which is growing really at a rapid rate and it is providing major contributions to the field of management and the last approach for today that we have is human behavior approach it is the outcome of the thoughts developed by behavioral scientists who looked at the organization as a collectivity of people for achieving certain spe specified objectives. Now as the name suggests human behavior approach is entirely related and focuses upon the human aspect of the organization how the behavioral science the human resources has to be taken care of and it was in this approach it was in the human behavior approach wherein we had the different theories of motivation that were given by different contributors whether we had the Maslow's need hierarchy we had the Herzberg theory we had McGregor's theory we had Likert theory or the other uh, motivation theories given by other propounders that all was the contribution of the human behavior approach only now uh, this was all about uh, today's video today's topics that we had to cover I hope it was clear to you all any doubts any confusion you can mention down in the comment section below again a reminder subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed yet that's all for today thank you and have a nice day